Hello, I'm in San Davery and today we are taking a look at another one of my old sketchbooks. This is the sketchbook that I used during July and August of 2015. So right off the bat, we've got some Gers as well as a, uh, I don't remember her name, but she's the, uh, the cool a alien lady from Invader Zim. I just watched Invader Zim for the first time and I really liked it. And then that summer we were also playing a lot of Worms Armageddon. Um, <laughs> If you don't know what that is, it's basically just a multiplayer game where you have a, like a team of four worms and they try to kill each other with various weapons. It's like a turn-based game. Each of our housemates had a customized worms team. Mine was called the Daring Danes. There was Hamlet, Horatio, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern. So there was my sketch of the team leader. Hamlet shows no remorse. I always thought that was funny when that tagline came up because, you know, Hamlet. More Invader Zim. Obviously the first thing I did when getting into a new fandom was to draw a joke that had been done about five times already, I'm certain. Uh, I saw a tutorial on how to make a calligraphy nib out of like an old pen and a, uh, a soda can. So that's what this was. I did so and practiced shitty shitty calligraphy. More calligraphy. Here was thumbnails and concept sketches for the art for a playlist. This was a Nux playlist that was mostly comprised of metal. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, there was like a lot of symphonic metal and a bit of like heavy experimental music. So I'll put that in the description if I can find it. And then here was the actual art for it. I did the art, the title lettering separately and then scanned both in and colored it all, including a background gradient on the computer digitally. Yep, there is the title lettering. Another gur, a little centaur. I think that's pretty cute. Um, uh, it's, what are they called? Naga? I think those are called Nagas when it's a the half snake person. And some flowers. Furry feet, drawing my housemates as animals. Um, a little Jake, some expressions. And this is a drawing of a stuffed animal I was given. Hold on, actually. Here he is. His name is Killer. A friend of mine handmade him and gave him to me as a housewarming gift. I love him a lot. Oh. I'm not sure what that is, but it's pretty cool. And then there is Wanda from Bojack Horseman, season two. Ah! Wanda, you are so cool and you only lasted a season. Please come back and date Princess Carolyn. Another Wanda, a uh... Who's that fusion? It's Sardonyx and a little Diane Nguyen. More Wandas and a furry and a fish. A Zim, a Peridot, and <laughs> um, you know, the band Corn. It's wheat instead of corn. Ah, I still think that's kind of funny. A furry that I apparently was not feeling. Hey, it's Bojack Horseman from Bojack Horseman. Um, these are all notes for a volunteer position I had at the college radio station. And another Wanda. This one turned out really good, I think. Wanda was one of those characters where sometimes there are certain characters, like, um, another one that comes to mind immediately is Pickles from Metalocalypse, where, like, their designs are really good and make sense, but then when you try to draw them, they just have so much going on that it takes a lot of practice to make them look good in your own style. But I remember being very proud of this Wanda because I'd sort of finally figured out how to make her look good. I still really like her. I love Wanda. Oh, I was taking a Shakespeare class over the summer. What play is this from? It was a historical play that was also like on the tragic side. I want to say it's Richard II, but there was this really funny scene where just like everyone is running into the room and challenging each other to duels and they're all like throwing their gauges down on the ground and then one of them shouts, someone lend me a gauge so I can throw down another because he's already thrown down his gauge and yet he still wants to fight more people. Anyway, it made me laugh laugh so hard when I was reading it that I had to do a quick little doodle. And then there's a uh, Rose Quartz and a Lapis. Oh, I think that's because I do a fusion of them. Yep, 
There she is. Rose Quartz and Lapis Fusion. I had a lot of good meta behind this fusion, but I did not write any of it down, so I cannot remember. Um, I believe her name was Iolite. Really pretty. Oh, and there's their fusion dance. Cute. And this is the drawing for a Steven Universe tarot card. This is The Fool, which is the card of new beginnings and entering a new situation with an open mind. Um, in the original card, which I actually think I have right here. Hold on a second. Da da da, where are you? Here we go. In the original Pamela Coleman Smith card, and yes, I said Pamela Coleman Smith, the figure is walking off a cliff, which I used one of those like floaty islands that appear in a couple different episodes in place of that to give it more of a Steven Universe flavor. They've got like a little bindle, and so I replaced that with the cookie cat fridge from the first episode and holding a flower, which I kept given that, you know, those roses are like a big symbol, especially in the earlier seasons of Rose Quartz and Steven's relationship to her. Yeah, I think this one came out really, really nicely and I'm really pleased with how I adapted the symbolism. Um, if I did it again, I would probably add in a little centipedal here as the dog. Yeah, Steven Universe tarot card. I think I was planning to do like the entire major arcana, but then obviously I didn't. Yeah, I stopped. <laughs> I planned to do the Major Arcana and just stopped at the second card. This is Sardonyx as the Magician. One second. Where are you, Magician? Please. Here we go. So in the original card, the Magician has like a little figure eight representing the uh, flow of power. They're lifting their sort of like magical conduit over their head and they've got the four symbols on the table in front of them. And I believe I chose Sardonyx it because, you know, she had kind of had that like vaudeville magician kind of flavor to her. And then also because she had this staff, which could be easily substituted for this. If I was going to go back and change anything about this, I would have incorporated um, these symbols where the magician has a symbol for each of the four tarot suits in front of him. You got pentacle cup, sword, and wand. But yeah, I was obviously having a lot of trouble with the pose, so I just quit. And that was the end of my Steven Universe tarot project, RIP. We got a dancing skeleton, some little skulls, and a bird. Here is a rat king that I drew. Don't know why I decided to draw that, but I do like how it came out. <sighs> Here's a bunch of puns about things that Amethyst could turn into, plus a sad verse. Mm. Here's just a page of different doodles. Um, I can almost guarantee I was hanging out at the LGBT center while doing this. It's where I was around this time when I was doing most of these, just pages that are filled with various silly thoughts. Oh, this was, <laughs> this was definitely at the LGBT center because they had these pillows that I think were supposed to be cute. They were like a big heart pillow with two little cartoon arms. I thought they looked kind of creepy, so I gave one a big old creepy mouth with a lot of teeth. Oh, we've returned to doing some calligraphy pack practice. A furry, a rose quartz, and an attempt to imitate my style from when I first started drawing. Shout out to How to Draw Manga Books for sparking my interest in art. Woohoo. Another Dear Furry and some more calligraphy practice. A diary comic script that never got made about some feelings I had about what it was like to transition from a cis girl who people don't want to listen to and needs to sort of shout to be heard versus a trans guy who ostensibly has male privilege and is listened to, but, um, you know, sometimes really that isn't the case. And that's where I stopped. I'm not sure why I didn't finish the last couple pages, but I'm guessing it is because this paper was really thin and kind of hard to draw on, so I must have just gotten sick of it and skedaddled over to a new sketchbook. So that was my sketchbook from July and August of 2015. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time when I continue my way on down my stack of old sketchbooks, looking through them one at a time. Thanks for watching. Bye!